we can see that as soon as I turn this thing on, it starts to send out MIDI CC data. And so now we have this. Add a little drum loop. Hello and welcome to Hack Attack. My name is Joko Back, I'm your host, and you're watching a Hack Attack episode. This is Craft by Studio Amplify, and we now have MIDI out. That's right. Every cell you see in this surface is just sending out MIDI note data and MIDI CC data to Korg Gadget. Check this out. I'll link you to the full performance video that I made using this surface at the end of this episode. Since this is a tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the new MIDI system inside Craft. So here we have an empty template and I'm going to begin by creating a new loop. And when we get to this menu, we choose channel and here we have a list of channels. And now we also have MIDI tap there and we get to this page right here. So a cell like this only has three pages like the piano roll the settings for the interaction and synchronization of the cell and also a keyboard and here in the keyboard page is where we set our MIDI device and MIDI channel now for the output all you have to do is simply tap until you hit the output you want so if you've got a MIDI interface connected to your iPad or iPhone then it will show up here while scrolling through all these different devices we're gonna choose gadget and I'm not sure about the channel yet because inside gadget I've got quite a lot of gadgets loaded so let's have a look at Phoenix. And so we go down here and we can see that I've chosen channel two. Now we can also see that I've got all ins as an input device. And now you might be wondering, why am I not just setting this to craft? This is a little bug, I think, because when I choose craft as an input source, it doesn't work. If you're using gadget, then just set it to all ins and you should be okay. And this only happens with gadget. Okay, so all we needed was the MIDI channel number and that's number two. So let's head back into Croft and choose MIDI channel number two. And now we should have sound. Let's go up an octave. Nice. And that's how simple it is. Now, we also have more controlling elements because right now we're only using MIDI note data, but we can also use MIDI CC data to control stuff inside the gadgets themselves or any other synthesizer that you might want to use with Croft. So the elements we have to work with are dials and morph cells. And the morph cells are really cool because they can work as modulation sources too, instead of just being used as switches. More about that in a bit. So let's just choose the dial for now and we get to this select channel menu again. Now all we have to do is to assign it to this one that says gadget 2 and that's MIDI channel 2. Press there and we have this page. Now if we look up here we can see that we have the CC data menu and so we can either tap through them like this or we can open up a list. All we have to do now is to find out what CC data controls what and so inside gadget at least we do have a list so we head into to Phoenix and press the function button. And right here we have the list of MIDI CCs. Now I want to control the filter frequency. We have that one right there and that's MIDI CC 74. So let's head back into Croft and look for MIDI CC 74 and it's right there. Let's press OK. Pretty cool. But as I mentioned earlier, we also have one more modulation source and that is the morph cell. 
And so these can be automated. But instead of doing the exact same thing that we've been doing so far, I've got another cool user case for you. Like I've done in this setup right here. So here we have the Novation Media Nova. It's connected to the iPad through my iRig Mini 2 media interface. And I've got two elements here, including one loop. The knob is controlling the filter cutoff. <laughs> But I'm also using this morph cell to modulate the same frequency cutoff in the filter. Only I've set it to modulation mode. And so if we dive into the menu here and search for the filter and go into filter one and look at the frequency knob, then we can see that as soon as I turn this thing on, it starts to send out MIDI CC data. And so now we have this. <laughs> Add a little drum loop. So if we head into the morph cell, then we can see that I've just assigned a CC number, CC74, and that one controls the filter cutoff inside the Novation Mini Nova. And then I simply set a modulator shape. Now you've got several to choose from. There's a wide range of different modulator shapes or waveforms. When you choose flat, then it doesn't do anything. So it's basically like having an on-off switch for some values. With the modulator shape, as soon as you choose one of those, then the cell starts sending out variable MIDI CC data. And so there you have it. I absolutely love Croft. I recommend it highly to anyone who wants something with a different interactive surface to work with. The strong point of Croft, for me at least, is that I'm not only building a track, I'm also building a surface meant for live usage. It looks great, it performs great. The synthesizer engine is built upon FM synthesis. It's got some great drum kits and you can add your own samples. All of that together with the MIDI out system makes Croft a killer app. I'll put an app link down in the description so you can go grab it for yourself. Now I do suggest that you go check out the live performance video I made with this surface. It's pretty awesome. I'll put a link to the video in the description box and I've also put the video at the end in those, you know, little square, but oh, never mind. Oh, and for anyone who wants to know what's inside these cells and how I built all of this and what's controlling what, how many layers I've got in here. I'm gonna do a live stream as I did with the last craft surface I made in where I go through each and every one of the cells and tell you about my thought process in it and all of that good stuff. So stay tuned for an announcement in where I uh, announce the date and time for the live stream. Thank you so much for watching. All comments and ratings are very much appreciated. I've also got a Patreon page. So if you want to support creativity and if you find value in the content I produce, then why not join up on Patreon? Now, if that isn't your cup of tea, then I've also got a PayPal me link down in the description. You can find it and you can also see it up here. Uh, wait, there somewhere. If you want to do a one-off donation and you don't want to do the Patreon thing. Now, if you don't want to do either Patreon, Patre Patre Patreon or PayPal, then you can share my videos, press the thumbs up. And if you subscribe, don't forget to press in that little bell thing, because that way you'll get notified every time I upload a new video. As usual, I wish you a very productive week. Now go finger all of your stuff and have a lot of fun doing it. Oh my God, that's a really nasty smudge right there.